Today we're going to start a series on heating and light and we're going to be doing some experiments, we're going to be doing some skills demonstrations, we're going to do a bunch of different things to try to expand our knowledge on heating and light. Now heating and light are of course two very important things. Um, anytime you're out in the wilderness you need to be able to, to create heat and you need to be able to create light. Both of those you generally do through fire. So in this series we're going to talk a lot about how to start fires, how to keep fires going. Um, we're going to talk about different survival methods for creating fire. We're going to talk about different methods for creating and maintaining and controlling heat um, and then for throwing light. Um, we're going to look at different levels of things. Some of those are going to be things that we prepare at home and then we take out in the wilderness with us or are there things for if there's a grid down situation. In a grid down situation how are you going to be able to create heat and light in, in your home. And so we're going to go through a few things to help you prepare to be able to do that. Some of the things that we're going to be doing will require some advanced preparation. So what we're going to do today is go through some of those advanced preparations uh, and we're going to do all this indoors. So we're going to go through several things that you'll be able to do ahead of time in preparation and have those stored away and ready to go for you. We're going to be we're going to be working a lot in this series out of my light and heat evacuation kit. This has all kinds of goodies in it for uh, creating light and heat, and this is part of my evacuation kit for my evacuation series that uh, we'll be doing videos on all of that. So we'll be working a lot out of this. <clears throat> One of the things that we're going to do first is, is some preparatory work for an experiment. We're going to go through and learn how to build candles out of animal fat, out of all natural products um, with nothing that you have to have from the store, nothing that you have to have with you necessarily. We're going to learn how to do stuff completely from scratch. One of the things I have a personal frustration with is a lot of times when you go to, to research skills or study skills a lot of what you find is that they'll tell you go get this from the store or have this from the store, something pre-made. So a part of this series is going to focus on how to build things completely from scratch. One of those things that we're going to look at is building candles. And for that candle building experiment, we're going to build candles out of animal fat. So what we've got here is the leftover cuttings from a roast beef that we had the other day and you can see here it's very what the cattlemen like to call marbled it's very very fatty meat and so what we're gonna do we've already eaten what we wanted out of this roast so what we're gonna do is we're going to salvage the fat out of this meat and we're gonna try to turn it into a candle now this is an experiment um, it's this is the first time I've done this and I want to see if it'll work but I want to be able to make this from all natural materials out in the wild um, in a survival situation I could get an animal and it would have fat on it and I would be able to use that fat theoretically to make candles and other stuff we're also going to use the same kind of methods to learn how to make soap so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all these chunks of meat into small pieces so that the fat will not take so long to, to cook out and to extract it. So the smaller the pieces that you start with, the quicker it'll cook down. So I've got my stove heated to preheated to 370 and we're going to cut this into fairly small pieces so that the fat will melt out, melt out quicker. And here comes my little helper Serenity and she's going to Go over there and grab your stool and come over and help. She's going to help keep me supplied in meat to cut here. So once we get these all cut up and we put them in the stove, once they melt down, that's a little bit loud. Okay, you have many pieces of meat to cut. Once we get these cut down or melted down then what we should have is a lot of liquid fat floating on top and we're going to pour that fat off and we'll go through
through how we're going to prepare to build a candle from that. But really all we have to do at this point is cook off this fat. I mean more. So in our survival situation, we're going to kill an animal to eat and the fat scraps we're going to put into some kind of pan and over a fire or over coals, just keep putting it in there. Over coals we're going to we're going to cook that meat down. And I've seen some reports where you know, you, this can take several hours, it can take, uh, one, one guy I saw talking about it said it would take seven hours, others have said it takes two hours. We're going to find out here what it's going to take and, you know, if you're cooking it over a fire in a survival situation, all you have to do is keep your fire stoked because all, you, all you're trying to do is melt down this fat and it's all inside and around the meat and the easiest way to get it out is to cook it down. So all we're doing is melting it down. So over a campfire, um, we don't care really how long it takes. All we really need in that situation is some kind of a pot. And you know that could be a clay pot that we make out in our survival situation um, that we've built and fired and we, maybe we put all our fat cuts in that and we cook it down in that and pour off the fat. Whatever we need to do in a survival situation, somehow we need to be able to have a dish to cook everything down in though. Like I said, we want this to be stuff that, we want this to all be things that we're not telling you go out and buy this. This is all about how to do it from scratch. So we're just about done with this. What we're going to do is we're going to finish cutting this up and then we're going to get it in the stove and then we're just going to have to wait and you know the video, we'll cut the video to when we've pulled it out and we'll show you what things are looking like when we're ready. The, uh, this meat, you know, this is just reclaiming meat that we ate here that had, it was a, not a very good cut. It had lots of fat in it. And so this is all where we cut around the fat. So there is some meat in here. And you know, with this, you could feed it to your dogs or there's, I mean, it's still going to be good meat. It's going to be well cooked meat by the time it's done. And you know, we don't want to waste anything when we're in a survival situation. So we, we could definitely still eat this meat. <coughs> Actually, in a survival situation, we have to eat eating this meat regardless of the fat content. So here's what we're going to put in the oven. Hopefully you can see how fat laden this is. And we're just going to throw it in. And we'll check it in a couple hours and see how it's doing. And that's our first step in making tallow candles. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, it has been four hours since we put this in. And you should be able to see all the liquid fat in here. There's still, like if you look right here, you can see there's still fat. You can see there's still fat on some of this meat. And so we're going to let it cook longer. But what we're going to do right now is drain it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it into this colander and catch it in this container here and the fat will set back up as it cools but what we'll do is once we collect all of it then we're gonna go ahead and melt it again and we'll put it in then we'll build our candle 
So I'm going to pour this into the colander. Just separate this all out. Got some crunchy meat in here. That's kind of hot. So, some of this fat that's left, it's pretty liquefied, but the meat's all crunchy now. So I'm going to pour it back in here and see if we can get any more out. The reason I wanted to pour it out is I, I couldn't tell if we were getting any more benefit from continuing to cook it. So this way, if we get another pool of fat on the bottom, we'll know that continuing to cook it did us some good. So there's what we got out of it. Could probably make a small candle out of that. When I angle it all, it's about like that. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're now ready to work on the next step for our tallow candle and what I've got here is just a regular tin can and I filled it with wet dirt from outside there's some grass and what we're going to do is use this to make our mold so I'm just going to get my fingers in here and we're not making a very big candle this is going to be kind of a short stubby kind of candle kind of like my fingers so I'm just going to all I'm doing is kind of excavating out a hole and smoothing it out. Now, of course, this is a mold, so the outside of our candle will be the exact relief of the inside of my mold. So I want to get it fairly smooth. I mean, in reality, I don't care. But I prefer it look somewhat decent for some reason. Okay, so there's what I've got, and I'm going to pour my candle into here, or my tallow into here in a minute, and I'm going to use an old shirt to make a wick with. All I'm going to do with that is cut a little strip, and we'll set it in here, and I'll tie it on a pencil to hold it up, and then I'll pour in my fat. So we're about ready to give that a try. Let's go check the cooking beef and see if we've got more fat from it. Okay, so the oven's still been cooking. It's been another two hours. And let's see what we've got here. It looks like there's a little bit more fat, but not too much. I'm not sure that the additional two hours of cooking has really given us anything. So we're going to set up here. I 
that's it. So, not too much. There's our fat, there's our new fat. Gave us a little bit, but not very much. And the meat, I still see a little bit of fat glistening in there, but I don't think we're really rendering that much off anymore. And uh, so we're going to throw this out, or we'll feed it to the dogs actually. And we're going to get this all liquefied again and then we'll pour it into our candle. Okay, so now we're going to make our wick real quick here. And I've just got an old t-shirt that's all raggedy and stained and dirty. And so, remember this is all meant to be created from natural materials that we would have on hand and this shirt is completely reasonable as something that we would have available to us so what we're going to do is I'm going to tie this on this pencil Just like that. And it's substantially longer than I need it to be, so I'll cut it down that right there. And it's a little too long. That's perfect right there. So as long as I can get a, a good pour that's right at the bottom. Now, one thing I should be doing, but this is so small and it's an experiment, I should have something on the bottom of that wick so that it holds it in the candle and, and you won't be able to pull the wick up out of the candle. But on our next ones we'll do that. With this one, we're just going to see if we can even make this work. So now we're ready to get our tallow and we're going to pour once again over something to keep us from making a mess and here we go Wow. I misjudged that. I had more fat than I thought. I could have made that. I could have made my hole a lot deeper. I still got some left. So, you can see it's overflowed and I still have a little bit of fat left. But it's overflowed and We'll have to trim down the candle when we take it out. But that should do it. Now we just need to let it sit. And uh, once all the fat has set, then we should be good to go. And we'll test it out. Okay, this has now had several hours to sit. And it seems to be set up all the way. So I'm going to take the pencil out and I'm going to try to dig this out. Quite a 
mess there. One of the things, uh, I was reviewing some stuff and I forgot a step, and that was when I poured this out, I meant to filter it through cheesecloth. And from what I've read in my research, filtering it through cheesecloth will help remove the smell. Right now it smells like beef fat, which doesn't really smell that great. So filtering it is supposed to help take out the smell. It looks like it did come out nice and solid. And so here we go. There's a candle made out of beef fat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim some of these edges up a bit. And then we're going to light it and see if it'll wick. I think it will. So we're just going to trim some of this off. I think that it would probably work nicely to use like a cup, a, 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 one of those waxed paper cups to hold it because it's you know kind of gooey and it's solid but it's kind of slippery to the touch and it might be nice to have something to hold it in and it doesn't want to sit flat let's try to trim this But this is just an experiment, see how it works and uh, figure out the best way to do it. So now let's get it lit. Okay, so I, I realized that the shape of this looked like it would fit nicely in an egg shell, cart, uh, an egg carton. That at least gives me something to grip. So. So I'm just going to cut the top of this wick. And I'm going to light it. And we'll let it burn down and hopefully it'll wick. Well at this point it seems to be doing a, a decent job of wicking the fat up into the wick. Um, it looks to me like it's working. I mean the flame's not burning down any further and it's holding actually just above the fat level. So there we go. A fully functional candle made out of materials that you can find in any survival situation and obviously providing light providing a little bit of heat not that we would cook over this but don't have to go to the store to get anything to make this so now we'll have to start experimenting with uh, some other methods not bad for last night's roast beef and an old t-shirt.